Hello and welcome to Today in History. It's going to be a packed one today. Um, welcome, welcome to my channel. My name is Tony F. Yesimana. Let us roll back the blind. And we are headed to the year 1066. Of course, if you're British, you know what happened in this, in this year. This was the year of the Battle of Hastings. So what happened today? The Battle of Hastings fought this day in 1066. King Harold II of England was defeated by the invading army of William, Duke of Normandy, and Norman conquest, establishing Normans as rulers of England. So this is a painting of the Battle of Hastings, which occurred on this day. This was the day that King Harold of England was defeated by the invading army of William, Duke of Normandy, in the Norman conquests, which established the Normans as rulers of England. 1644. I did feature this guy in one of my other videos, so go check him out. Oh, you might recognize his face. His name is William Penn. He was an English Quaker leader and advocate of religious freedom. There's something else about this face, and I've given you a clue as well. I did mention the word that begins with Q, so go check out my other video. I'll place the link right here so you can check that out as well. But there's also something about this guy that makes him famous. William Penn oversaw the founding of the American Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So this was the day he was born and the year was 1644. Let's move on to the year 1834. Henry Blair, pictured here, received a patent for his corn planting machine on this day. So the year again was 1934. So this is Henry Blair, pictured here, who received his patent for the corn planting machine, pictured here as well. It's a drawing of his um, machine. Okay, 1890 on this day, Dwight D. Eisenhower, President of the United States. He was an army general as well. He served as the 34th President of the United States from 1953 to 1961. During World War II, he became a five-star general in the army and served as Supreme Commander of the Allied Expeditionary Force in Europe. He was responsible for planning and supervising the invasion of North Africa in Operation Torch in 1942 to 1943, the successful invasion of Normandy in 1944 to 1945 from the Western Front. Eisenhower was born David Dwight Eisenhower and raised in Abilene, Kansas, in a large family of mostly Pennsylvania Dutch ancestry. His family had a strong religious background. His mother became a Jehovah's Witness. So that's quite interesting because the Jehovah's Witnesses are conscientious objectors. So she probably became a witness after her son became an adult. Son was raised um, in a strong religious background, perhaps um, in church. Um, but it says Eisenhower, however, did not belong to any organized church until 1952. So he was probably raised in church and the mother became a Jehovah's Witness when she, when he was an adult, so he carried on in his ways. Or he, he refused to join um, the, the witnesses. Anyway, he graduated from West Point. A military Academy in the United States in 1915. Beautiful place. I've been there. I was there in 2002 where I saw George Bush Jr. live for the first time. And my cousin happened to graduate from West Point in 2002. Anyway, that's by the way. Um, so he graduated from West Point in 1915 and later married Marnie Dowd. 
with whom he had two sons. So that's Dwight, the Eisenhower West Point graduate, President of the United States, commander of the forces during the Second World War. Um, Operation Torch, yeah, he was a commander of the Allied Expeditionary Force, which invaded North Africa in Operation Torch and also successfully invaded Normandy from the Western Front. So let's move on to 1926. Now, this is an interesting story, one that makes me smile. For those of you who have kids who are around my age, or oh, older or even younger, um, I will put you out of your, out of your soft suspense, my lord, I'm biting my tongue today. Anyway, this is what happened on this day, makes me smile. So this guy, his name is A. A. Milne, so Milne is spelled M-I-L-M-E. He was the guy who you might have guessed, the man behind the characters, Winnie the Pooh, pictured here, Christopher Robin, which happens to be his son's name, which I found quite um, touching, that he named one of his characters after his son, his only son, as a matter of fact, and other characters um, were created by him. The other characters were Eo and Piglet, amongst others, so the bear, uh, the book, or Amen's book, children's book, featured the adventures of a honey-loving bear and his friends. So this is a honey-loving bear. Alan Alexander Milne, which is his full name, was born in Kilburn, London, and the year was 1926. His parents were Sarah Milne, Sarah Marie Milne, Lee Hagenbotham, and John Vine Milne. He grew up at Henley House School, 67 Mortimer Road, now Crescent, Kilburn. It was a small independent school run by his father. One of his teachers, interestingly, was H.G. Wells. Now check out H.G. Wells, Google him up. I haven't done anything on him, but you'll find out it's quite interesting. H.G. Wells taught there from 1889 to 1890. Milne attended Westminster School and Trinity College, Cambridge, where he studied on a mathematics scholarship, graduating with a BA in mathematics in 1903. Interestingly, he didn't carry on with his mathematics career, as you might have guessed. He edited and wrote for Ranta, a student magazine. He collaborated with his brother Kenneth, and their articles appeared over the initials AKM. And of course, I'm sure you'd have guessed what AKM is. And the initials of him, obviously, and his brother. So, Arthur Kenneth Milne. Milne's work came to the attention of the leading British humor magazine, Punch, where Milne was to become a contributor and later an assistant editor. Considered a talented cricket fielder, Milne played for two amateur teams that were largely composed of British writers. Interesting. The Alak Barrys and the Authors XI. His teammates included fellow writers J. M. Barry, Arthur Conan Doyle, and P. G. Woodhouse. Interesting. Interesting biography of A.A. Milne, who was born on this day in 1926. Um, his characters were, are, were and are still very much loved by my kids and countless millions of kids all over the world. His characters are made of smile, you know. For me, personally, it takes me way back to when my kids were young. They were very young. This is what kept them calm, made them smile, made them happy, you know. Um, so, yeah, a. Emil, who created um, Winnie the Pooh and other characters um, of note was Christopher Robin, who happened to be a character that he named his son, or his son, 
um, the character that was named after his son. Okay, let's move on to the next um, important event of today. Ralph Lauren was born, or Ralph Lauren, if you like, the American way. Um, he was an American fashion designer. He's also a philanthropist and billionaire businessman. That's known for the Ralph Lauren Corporation, a global multi-billion dollar enterprise. Named after the horse Lauren Lipschitz, a prized winner owned by DJ Jesus. He or Jesus. He has become well known for his collection of rare automobiles, some of which have been displayed in museums, museum exhibits, I beg your pardon. Ralph Lauren was born in the Bronx, New York City, to Ashkenazi Jewish immigrants, Frida Kotler, so Frida Lee Kotler and Frank Lifshitz, an artist and house painter from Pinsk, Belarus. He is the youngest of four siblings, two brothers and one sister. The Ralph Lauren Corporation started in 1967 with men's ties. At 28 years old, Lauren worked for a tie manufacturer, Bo Bromnell, or Bo Bromel, where he convinced the company's president to let him start his own line. Drawing on his interest in sports, Lauren named his first full line of menswear polo, as you can see here, in 1968. So that's Ralph Lauren, obviously pictured here with one of his creations, probably the most popular creation ever, it's Ralph Lauren polo t-shirt. A picture, obviously, of um, someone on a horse playing polo. So, happy birthday, Ralph Lauren. He is 81 today. And here's a man who I'm going to feature next, a year younger, Ralph Lauren. Very popular in the United Kingdom. His name is Cliff Richard. So, Sir Cliff Richard, OBE, which stands for Order of the British Empire, is a British singer, musician, performer, actor, and philanthropist. Richard has sold more than 250 million records worldwide making him one of the best-selling music artists of all time. He has total sales of over 21 million singles in the United Kingdom and is the third top-selling artist in UK singles chart history, behind the Beatles and Elvis Presley. Interesting. Interesting. So, happy 80th birthday, Sir Cliff Richard. Let's move on to the year 1947. History was made on this day by this man, Chuck Yeager. He is or was an American test pilot. He became the first person to break the sound barrier. So you can see that to your right, an aircraft, the sonic boom. Um, so that's Chuck Yeager to your left, who made history on this day in. 1947 when he broke the sound barrier. We move on now to the year 1964. Martin Luther King Jr. pictured right here. He's the youngest man to win Nobel Peace Prize. So this was given to him in the year 1964 at the age of 35. Martin Luther King Jr. wins the Nobel Peace Prize on this day in 1964. Next, Usher, musician, full name Usher Raymond IV, born on this day in 1978. He is an American singer, songwriter, actor, businessman, and dancer. He was born in Dallas, Texas but raised in Chattanooga, Tennessee, until moving to Atlanta, Georgia. At the age of 12, his mother put him in local singing competitions before catching the attention of a music A&R from La Face Records. He released his self-titled debut album, Usher, 
1994, and Lusufame in the late 90s, the release of his second album, My Way. That was released in 1997. So that's Usher, who celebrates his 42nd birthday today. So happy birthday, Usher. We move on to the year 2012. Last but not least, the Space Shuttle Endeavour, seen here flying over the hills of Hollywood, over the Hollywood, famous Hollywood sign. Um, two days after arriving at Los Angeles in International Airport, the Space Shuttle Endeavour reached its final destination, the California Space Center. Its 12-mile journey through the city had required trees to be cut down and signs to be removed. Check this out that massive behemoth gliding through the streets of Los Angeles, California. So, understandably, yeah, trees had to be cut down, signs had to be moved to make sure that this shuttle made its way to its final resting place. So on that note, guys, we should end today's today in history it's nice hanging out with you hopefully i shall see you tomorrow for another edition of today in history my name once more is sotonye afyasimama thanks for dropping by do not forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video and share this video with family and friends as well Consider subscribing by clicking the notification bell so that you get updates of my video uploads. See you again tomorrow. Stay safe. Bye-bye.